Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on a telegram channel called Antiquitic Research Archive. Please check the description to know more about the channel. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of make the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The Importance of Sophistication, The Real Origin of Religious Customs Part 2 The businessman, author, and scientist, named Dr. Masaru Moto, whom the mainstream has been given the Science Medal of Honor, discovered something that changes everything. I'll explain his experiment as simply as possible. He said nice things to water, froze the water, then observed the crystal patterns in the ice. No, really. Love and Gratitude this is what the frozen water looked like when he said pleasant things to it. Conversely, he said insulting and negative words to water, and it resulted in this. And before you ask, yes, this phenomena is consistent across major languages. You can read the paper at archive.org with the title The Hidden Messages in Water by Masaru Moto. The implications of this will change your life, and that is no exaggeration. Let's explore these implications. First off, this proves that spoken word, even through multiple languages, has a clear good and a clear bad. They are not subjective or up for interpretation. Some words are positive and some are negative. All animals on earth hear and perceive our words in the same way that we do. More importantly, our body has a very large amount of water, up to 70% apparently, so, that means, any and all words that reach your body, will affect the water and blood in your body, and therefore, affect your health and performance. Furthermore, here is what this supports. 1. Proper or sophisticated language. 2. No negative language or cursing, at least around family, business, and children. 3. Religious speech-based rituals have a legitimate scientific purpose. 4. Religious water-based rituals have a legitimate scientific purpose, baptism, or obligatory bath in Islam. This supports many religious practices in a huge manner. So much so, that it very strongly looks as though the originators of these customs actually understood the science. If so, then this question remains, how did they know about this? The biggest takeaway from this is, that good is good, and bad is bad. There is no finding your own truth, there is one truth. The most logical explanation to our everyday observations is, the existence of a creator who has established very clear laws based on the fundamental concept described in this post. The creator's laws are in accordance with how he created the world. Breaking these laws will result in evil, not because of the pure act of breaking the law, but because it adversely affects your body and others around you. It's like telling your kid not to run with scissors. The rule is to prevent injury, not the cause of the injury. This science would be different than the usual dogma promoted in the mainstream, known as soyance. They'd rather cut their own heads off than admit this. If you haven't heard of water memory before, this should be blowing your mind right now. The old world was not atheist. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The Energy or Odd Anomaly in the realm of antiquitic, there is discussion about certain energy rods. In old photographs, there are these rods that were attached to the tops of many buildings. 
This is a very odd phenomena, because the mainstream has been rather quiet on the anomaly. They have, however, given a couple explanations. The first explanation is that they are flagpoles. The problem is that the flags themselves are missing in countless photographs. These are two photographs of entire neighborhoods of buildings with flagless flagpoles. The other explanation is that they were Franklin rods. According to mainstream history, they were put on buildings to protect houses from getting hit by lighting. However, there is no consistency to how many poles they put up on each building in accordance with the surface area of the building. It's all over the place with no rhyme or reason. As we know today, lightning attraction range is directly proportional with 1 1 ratio of the length of the pole. The setups they used would have covered 30 to 40 percent of many of these buildings at most. If the flat part of the roof is resistant and would not need poles, it would not be consistent because many of the fronts of buildings are not within range of the poles either. If these poles were used for this, they had no consistent plan and had zero calculations for height and distance. The idea that the dozen scientists that conducted these pole experiments after Dalibert didn't at all measure the effect of pole height on attraction range is ridiculous. The rods are not flagpoles, and they are not Franklin rods. Their use in photographs is inconsistent with such uses. Therefore, the most logical conclusion is, they had another purpose. Some wordo drew a flag on this flagpole. Also the zeppelin is a cutout. Also, the clock is a cutout. What a great timeline we are given. If you are in the process of questioning what is reality and what is not, take a look at this anomaly. In the Palace of Versailles, there are many fountains. In order to bring water to the fountains, the Marley machine was built in 1684. In case you don't yet understand how ridiculous this is, here's what we are given. 1. No toilets were installed in the palace until 144 years after it was built. 2. People were defecating everywhere in the palace, late 1700s. On the floor, on steps, in corners, a strong implication they are unoriginal inheritors or squatters. Stop asking about pots, they did not use them. 3. Meanwhile, a giant machine was used to pump water into the palace fountains, but not a single pipe went into the palace itself. The conclusion is, toilets were not required for this building. And because people lived and worked here, an alternative waste management system was in use unknown to us. The best and only logical conclusion is beyond our scientific understanding. They did not need to poop. The end. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.